I live in Southern California. It's a lot of mountains, a lot of flat land, and a lot of ocean. When a storm passes by here because of the nature of our climate, it will rain in the flatlands where I live. And then I'll look out as the storm passes and take a look at Mount San Antonio, which is also known as Mount Baldy, that's 10,064 feet high, and there'll be snow on it. You probably noticed similar things. Why is there snow on top of that mountain, but there's not snow down in the flatlands? Well, you know what the answer is to this. As you go up in the atmosphere, air temperature decreases. The atmosphere has layers. The layers are based almost in totality on temperature changes. We are going to look at the layering of the atmosphere. Take a look at this diagram. The red squiggly line that you see represents air temperature. If you look down at the bottom of the diagram, you can see temperature in Fahrenheit. As you go to the right, temperature is increasing. As you go to the left, temperature is decreasing. So you can see 0 degrees, 40 degrees, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees, minus 40, minus 80, minus 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Then if you look on the right-hand side, don't worry about the left-hand side's kilometers, but if you look at the right-hand side, it's altitude in miles, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 miles up above the surface of the planet. If you take a look at that red line, you can see that down towards the surface of the planet, where zero's at, as you're increasing altitude, can you notice how the red line is going to the left, which means decreasing air temperature? If you can see that, then you'll understand the entire graph. Let's go through it. The lowest layer of the atmosphere, the layer that we all live in, is called the troposphere. This is where all the weather happens. It's where all the life is at, or almost all of the life. The troposphere goes from the surface, zero, up to somewhere between 5 and 10 miles up, maybe even 11 miles up, depending on where you are. It's characterized by having decreasing air temperature with increasing altitude. So the fact that the life is down here in the troposphere, where we're all at, and that the characteristic is decreasing air temperature with increasing altitude, which you should be able to see with that red line. It's going to the left. That means decreasing. That's how we characterize the troposphere. Then you can see that somewhere between 5 and 10, maybe even, as I said, 11 miles up, we hit something called the tropopause. If you look at the right side, you can see that there's three of these pauses. Tropopause, stratopause, mesopause. The way I would characterize them is like this. These are like a door. You're in one room, you go to the other room. When you do that, you go through a door or a doorway. That's what these pauses are. They're not actual places so much in the atmosphere. They, they are the location where you switch from one particular temperature profile to another temperature profile. So, somewhere between 5 and 10 miles above us, we hit the tropopause, which is going to be the transition to the next layer. That next layer is called the stratosphere. Like, there's a hotel in Las Vegas that's called the stratosphere. The stratosphere starts at about 5 to 10 miles up, so that's, that's its floor, and its ceiling is about 35 miles up. If you look at the way the temperature graph goes, it's a little odd. At first, as you're in the stratosphere, air temperature remains the same as you increase altitude, up to about 20 miles. Now, it's really cold, like minus 70, but it remains minus 70, up until about 20 miles up. And then you see what happens. What happens next is air temperature is increasing with increasing altitude, up to about 35 miles. That's the temperature profile of the stratosphere. It's stable air temperature up to about 20 miles, and then increasing air temperature with increasing altitude up to about 35 miles. You can see that the ozone layer is there. This is one of the reasons that it has that odd profile. So note that the ozone layer is in the stratosphere. Then at 35 miles up, we hit this next doorway that we're going to go through to the next layer of the atmosphere. That next doorway is called the stratopause. This is a place where we transition from the stratosphere into the mesosphere. Notice what happens in the mesosphere. In the mesosphere, we go back to the same kind of profile that we had in the troposphere, which is decreasing air temperature with increasing altitude. That happens from about 35 miles up until the ceiling of the mesosphere, which is 50 miles up. So the mesosphere, once again, is characterized by having 
decreasing air temperature with increasing altitude. And that goes from 35 miles up to 50 miles up. At 50 miles up, we hit the mesopause, which is this transition into the last of these zones, these layers of the atmosphere. So the mesopause is found at 50 miles up, and that transition transitions us to the thermosphere. The thermosphere starts at 50 miles up and goes to space. Notice for the first, let's say five miles, you have stable air temperature. So there's no change in air temperature for about the first five miles. It's very, very cold, minus 120, but there's no real change. And then from about 55 miles until space, there's increasing air temperature with increasing altitude until you reach space. 